So many of you might be wondering why, why to do this class, right? Or even this course. So I, I, I think uh, I'll just uh, show some, some examples, some teachers just to uh, uh, let you think and then uh, let you decide that whether you should continue in this course, isn't it? So like a uh, very simple example here, if you see uh, a table, right? There are two tables, three-legged and four-legged. So uh, in terms of precision, I would like to know later, like which one is better? Hmm? Why one is, one is preferred? Uh, if we are talking in terms of precision, which one is good example? Which one we should go for? So we'll come back and discuss this thing. So this is very simple example. You can encounter uh, anywhere. You can see in your home, uh, in any 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 coffee place, right? Three versus four, like. Uh, go, uh, our, this is uh, one example I think I saw and it's uh, really uh, interesting and fascinating to me because uh, the concepts and the things we will be discussing in this course uh, it's not like it's not there it's there for ages people know about it through experience uh, but somehow uh, we are forgetting these uh, basic concepts and then uh, practicing something which may which may not give us the precision required or the performance required so here uh, like on the left, what you see is a very uh, clay uh, chula, right? Chula is go in the man. So, and uh, it's a supported on, on three points only. You see here, is, there are only three points and any vessel, anything you can put on top of it and it, it's not, not new. Uh, even uh, like in uh, rural uh, places, in villages, people have been using it. Uh, they have been practicing, they don't have any engineering background, but they know it works. On the other hand, we have a very sophisticated stove uh, these days design, but you see there are four, four supports. Again, uh, which one is better? Uh, the modern one or the old one? So again, it's in terms of precision. And I think uh, one thing we have to understand uh, when we talk about the precision, we are talking about the philosophy. Uh, precision in terms of design, not precision manufacturing. So precision manufacturing is part of it, but uh, the, the thing we, I'll be discussing in this course is more towards the concept, developing those machines, implementing those concepts in realizing something, what, uh, what you uh, envisage in the beginning. Right, so you have certain specifications, and then you design the machine, right? So how close you get to those specifications right from the start, and that is the motive. It's not like you design the machine and then you started looking at the specification. You do experiments, and then whatever number comes, then you put it. But actual design is you start with your own requirements. You have certain requirements, and uh, those uh, those requirements you convert into technical specification, which we call design specifications, and then based on those design spe specification, you will start designing your product or your machine or your robot, anything, and then you you validate. Once it's done, you validate whether you were able to achieve those specification, and the they the uh, things we are looking at and when we talk about the precision in this course it's about achieving those specifications so uh, uh, there is uh, one key concept here and we talk about uh, degrees of freedom uh, very uh, later when we uh, start the individual chapters and then it's not about degrees of freedom only but how to constrain them so uh, there are certain degrees of freedom when a rigid body in space there are, there are six degrees of freedom but in reality in machines in product we need certain degrees of freedom but then others 
other degrees of freedom, they have to be constrained. So how they should be constrained so that we get the right motion. And if we do that, we'll, we'll achieve precision. And here you just see one example where we uh, build a setup, experimental setup, and they are just supported on six wire flexures, or you can simply say six wires, thin wires. So what you see here, at the red one is a, a just a steel wires of diameter one millimeter and length uh, 20 or 30 millimeter but they are good enough if they are done in a proper way they can support the entire load and they can precisely one to one if you have a load cell embedded at the bottom then you can measure any force acting on the on the plate, on the top plate, which is suspended over these six wire flexures. So we'll talk about this in details later. Now, next thing is, uh, okay, uh, when we go for miniaturization, there are still moving components. We still want to have certain, uh, certain motions and uh, want to detect, and then we want to know what are the what are the numbers we are measuring so like these days we are talking about imu sensor all the time right so like uh, this these are very inexpensive very and uh, you is using robotics or you have a miniature version in your phones right gyroscopes are there yeah? how it does so everybody is talking about the sensor but how it is made so actually at the heart of it is is these sensors. These are uh, MEMS devices, you can call it, and they are again mechanical components. Of course, you cannot see them. They are uh, so small, maybe of the order of micron. So you can see here 200 micron. This 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 distance is 200 micron. So these features are very small, but it's still it's a mechanism. It's a physical mechanism with a certain degrees of freedom. And here you see that you cannot make joints. You cannot have, have revolute joints like what we study in, uh, in design of machines or in mechanisms. But we have to create those joints. We have to get those motions so that we have the proper, proper mechanism and we can sense the motion and deliver it. So you see, these, these are main monolithic components. It's out of uh, one piece and here is a silicon. So how to design that? So in order to understand how it works and how it should be designed, we need to understand the degrees of freedom, how it should be uh, constrained. And then the another uh, very interesting topic we'll be covering is compliant mechanisms or flexures. We call it flexures or compliant mechanisms. So basically it's uh, elastic mechanisms. But they, they are done in a way that they give you precisely the motion that is needed for you. So uh, there are a lot of application in sensor development, microactuators. So uh, for instance, if you see here, a very nice watch, very expensive might be. But here again, there are no rigid links here, very flexible. You can see the, uh, these links moving. So, uh, of course, you have to know what, what is the motion, what is the degree of more, uh, freedom uh, required, and selectively you reduce the stiffnesses to get the compliance so that you can get uh, the required motion. So, uh, just one example I would like to show you. Yeah.
Uh, sorry. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, what do you see? Uh, okay, uh, I'm not able to show you the figure. Uh, but uh, what do you what do you see in that video? Uh, it's a, it's again monolithic. It's out of one 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 component, or you can say one paper, or it's a three uh, three D printed component, and you can see the size. But you have created a whole mechanism out of it, and it can be uh, actuated, and you can see uh, all the motion. So you can uh, get a different kind of motion. So. Uh, these days you can design very small components small rovers uh, but you need to understand how they should be built how to uh, understand what is the degree of freedom required and how to constrain them though so that you can uh, get the uh, specified uh, specifications so I, I i may like to stop it stop here for a while and uh, try to see who is there Yes, so uh, again, so who has joined lately? I have switched it on and uh, please speak up, eh? Yogesh Kumar. Okay, uh, and uh, just for some moment, I would like to, uh, I'd like you guys to switch on your video so that we can interact. Is it possible? Yes, please unmute yourself and uh, speak up. Uh, Mohit, I can see you. Uh, you are not audible. I think uh, maybe uh, Mohit, you have to unmute yourself first. I don't know whether I can do it. Mohit. I think uh, I don't know whether you can unmute yourself and speak up. Anyway, I, I hope you are a MTech student. Pawan. Sort of. Pradeep. Yes, yes, yes. 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 yes, I can hear my voice back. What about you? Yes, sir. I'm a tech student. Okay, good. So everything fine? Everything fine? Yes, sir. So where are you located at this moment? Sir, it's in Bhivani, Haryana. Okay. So it's still very cold there? Uh, yes, sir. Little, little gold in the morning. Okay. Hello, take care. So uh, I think uh, hopefully uh, we'll uh, see you guys soon. Huh? Yes, okay, sir. who else? Pawan. Okay. Uh, Ankit. Hello, sir. I hello. Think. Yes, hello. I'm also a mechanical student, mechanical and tech first year. Okay. Yes, I am and in Varanasi right now. MTech, right? Yes, yes, MTech first year. Okay, good. Okay, next. The Pan Shu. The Pan Shu. Mayank Rai, I know you are here. Mohit. Pavan, uh, yes, we discussed. Pradeep Kumar, Saurav Ranjan. Sumit Roy, uh, Yoga is Kumar. Anyway, uh, just uh, we'll continue. And uh, yeah, who was coming online? Please show up. You just switch up the video. So actually, I just got a. Uh, so you are Mohit, right? Mm. Chalo, I think we continue and uh, we'll discuss again. Start by the screen.
so uh yes uh we continue and then uh, okay one of the key thing uh, what we just covered is is about the miniaturization so when we want to uh, get very smaller things made and uh, maybe at the mems level or the micro or nano level uh, uh, we need to understand uh, exact constraint design or degrees of freedom concept and then convert uh, in convert it using flexures or compliant mechanisms. What you see here is now a uh, very interesting uh, design. And uh, this is uh, like uh, what I, I saw when I, I went for my PhD in Netherlands. And what you see here is there are six logs, right? Six logs suspended. Three are completely suspended in air. Three are touching. Uh, touching the grounds and they are interconnected through cables, but it's a very stiff structures. Very nice. Again, you have to understand the, the concept of uh, degrees of freedom and uh, how the forces are uh, uh, built in these uh, cables and the locks. One interesting thing here is uh, this will only work if uh, so one thing you have to understand the logs can take the compressive load the wires the steel steel cables they can take forces only in tension right so all the tensile so uh, if the forces in the cables are in in tension all the time then only uh, this thing will work and that's the beauty of it and people have worked on it, uh, structural designs, and many uh, in, in architecture, they have used it. So very nice design. So, but it's not just the static design. So this can be further developed. And suppose if you start actuating those cables, actually you can start moving the entire, entire structure. And therefore you can design a, a, a cable driven robots so you can see uh, here just at the bottom you have a robot which can go inside the uh, inside a, a tube uh, just like a snake robot but if you try to see closely our body is also uh, also works in a similar way and these uh, structures are, are go, called tensegrity structures so here again you see that using those locks and cable you can mimic the motion eh? and, and you can simulate our own body right and if we, we can go one step further actually we can design exoskeletons which can support our body so suppose if you are working in medical robotics and if you have to design design a robot which can be used uh, for rehabilitation so uh, you can very much use it and what you can see is there are a lot of space it takes minimal space and it can be uh, designed around the body but yes there is one caution that okay there is one uh, uh, mechanism here working but at the same time our body will be also part of the mechanism so it will be also bearing the load so the forces will be shared and uh, if it's not designed correctly, then uh, instead of uh, helping, we can do a lot of harm. So safety is a, a big concern. But the thing is, yeah, if you have a, have an understanding of these things, we can design a very good exoskeleton for our, uh, for any robotic applications. And this is not just for rehabilitation, but actually it can be powered and it can help us to do things what we can, we uh, a normal person may not be able to do. So, like uh, we, you might have seen in a movie Avatar or like even in uh, Iron Man, they have these kind of suits. So, uh, very much uh, these things can be designed once we understand the concepts. Yes. Now uh, I'm moving towards the next topic: the precision in manufacturing and developing this precision motion stages. So what do you see here is a motion stage. 
and it's completely supported on air bearings. Yeah, so here, sorry, I can't stop it. Huh? I don't know how to stop watch. Yeah, so I think in the previous example, what you what you see is a, a motion platform, and uh, that is uh, one of the one of the thing we are trying to do in this course. And uh, like previously, I have worked in developing the motion stages for uh, semiconductor devices and uh, the the core the expertise we need is in a way what we teach in this course so like if you want to develop a a, a system which can move and give a, a, a accuracy of the order of nano nanometers or even some micron level you need a very good system because there will be a lot of uncertainty if we design it using conventional means. So again, how to power them, what are the components to be used, what are the degrees of freedom required, whether it has to be rigid or flexible, those things need to be understood. Yeah, just look at this video. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll just move. Mm, yes, so there is one more uh, very nice concept. Maybe I'll, I'll quickly go through it. Um, 
have realized that why we are doing this course. So the objective, the course objective is to give an uh, insight in the conceptual design of precision mechanisms. Uh, so the heart, uh, heart of uh, any machine, if you see, is there are certain mechanisms there which, which gives you the desired motion or whatever is required and how to get that precision, right? And whether it's uh, in product or tools or in equipments. So developing those insight and then starting right from the concept. And then also like once we, we develop that understanding, we will be also able to recognize what are the problem areas, like in any, any existing pro, uh, problem, any existing application, you may encounter a lot of problems. And then you may be able to visualize okay, what, what are the issues, whether it's because of over constraint, certain things is not constrained properly. Is it that giving a problem? And then can you uh, find out design alternatives? Can you propose something better, maybe uh, less expensive, which is, uh, or maybe cost, uh, cost effective, maybe uh, easy to maintain. So one of the example uh, I can also give you is these glass doors. So if you see any glass door, uh, we have a, like uh, in IIT campus, we have CCD uh, in front of the CCD or any uh, offices and department offices we go, we have a lot of uh, glass doors, but they need uh, frequent maintenance servicing. So can you identify what are the issues? Eh? In uh, uh, at your home or nearby, you, ma you may see a lot of uh, these uh, iron gates, whether they are done properly. They have to rotate, but many times they, they make a lot of sound. Sometimes they can even break the wall. What's the problem? Why is happening? So all those things. So uh, that is the thing. And then in order to achieve that, we'll uh, go one by one so we'll talk about uh, constraining degrees of freedom so overall degrees of freedom and how to constrain them so uh, that is one and uh, exact constraint design then we talk about the design uh, for stiffness because nothing is rigid it's just we play with the different stiffnesses in certain direction the stiffness are very high certain direction the stiffness are relatively low. So they are the compliant directions and that's how we achieve. So then we talk about design for stiffness and then how to convert them uh, using flexures, different designs, right? So we talk about uh, elastic mechanism, flexures, and uh, then what are the other things we encounter and how to, so like friction is one of the problem. So how to encounter them by design. Huh? And we talk about certain uh, components which are used in developing this kind of precision motion stages. So, uh, it's, uh, so now I'm coming back to the course structure and then uh, talking about how we are going to manage the course. So it's a 202 course. So there are two hours lecture and uh, uh, two hours practical in a week. So overall it's a three credit course. Uh, what we want to have for this course is, okay, if you have done uh, mechanical engineering in your bachelor, that's good enough. So you cover most of the things, but if you have a different background, then I think understanding of kinematics and uh, design is very important. So uh, if you are from mechanical engineering and uh, from the design stream, I think more or less is covered. I think many times uh, this will be discussed and uh, some of you may bother me uh, later, like what is the evaluation criteria and uh, uh, what are the things we have to do. Eh? And many may leave after knowing this. Eh? So it happened, I had uh, like 40 registrations and the next class, it reduced, reduced to 10 or 20. Eh? So anyway, that's not a problem for me because okay, I'm handling lower, uh, smaller class is better. Eh? But if you are keen, it's a good. And uh, as it's a design course, uh, and there is a lab component, so uh, it, it's not a easy lab course where you have a standard uh, practicals and the instruction are given, and then you just follow them, and every week you finish. 
in this course, uh, what I do is I, I try to work on uh, live projects. So it means every, every student uh, have their own projects and it runs over the semester for the entire course. And then uh, we try to define, try to uh, meet, uh, meet every week and discuss and uh, we'll define the milestones in between we discuss. And then uh, till now I have a very good uh, output uh, in this course and uh, we have even published papers, we have patents, file patents as well. So if you work hard and if you are keen, you can uh, search for problems which might be bothering you or I will give you problem. So it can be even origami based or so you don't need to have a very sophisticated system, but you can work at home and work on those problems. So this is uh, means very uh, much in line with uh, like in today's scenario, we can work anywhere. But since uh, it's a, a, a lab based and it's a 202, so there is a substantial uh, portion here. So 30% will be, uh, 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 will be based on the uh, on your lab projects and then we'll uh, discuss uh, in the lab classes the, how it will be done and uh, but there is a 30 percent weightage to that there will be only one minor minor so okay it was done differently earlier but okay this time uh, I have changed it so minor I'm giving weightage of 20 percent there will be one major so uh, 30 percent and uh, there will be some term papers, quizzes, assignments, so amounting to 10 and 10%. So I'll, uh, depending on like how we move, we'll uh, segregate. So there will be some term papers. So certain topics I'll, uh, I'll ask you to uh, work on, uh, get some literature, read about it, and maybe uh, submit a report. Um, of course, uh, there will be some quizzes and assignments in between just to give you some hands on and uh, to know whether you are uh, in sync with uh, with the class and whether you are able to absorb the material provided to you uh, that's uh, how it will be evaluated uh, there are some uh, suggested materials so if you get a chance to come back okay a lot of things available in the library central library so uh, i uh, mainly uh, cover the portions in uh, Professor Sommer's book, Design Principles of Precision Mechanism, but it's not limited to that. So there is uh, one very nice book by Smith and Chetwan, Foundations of uh, Ultra Precision Mechanism Design. Uh, there is a book by Alexander Slocum from MIT, Precision Machine Design. So it's uh, also available. Uh, internet source is there so you can search and you may find uh, these books or other books so the details will be there in the website as well so if you search uh, go to my web page and uh, uh, see under the courses uh, you will find all the details and all the materials i will also upload them in the moodle but uh, there are a course link uh, in in my website and there you can get all the material yeah so you can always uh, check that and uh, you can drop me an email whenever uh, there is a doubt. Mm, yes, uh, uh, it's of course me, uh, Jitendra Khabat, and uh, I work in the area of precision machine design, mechatronics, medical robotics, right, medical devices. Uh, I work closely with the Professor Mukherjee and uh, if needed, then maybe some uh, courses, uh, some topics, might be covered by him, but uh, this course, most of the lectures will be taken by me, uh, will be given by me. So this is a little detail about, uh, about me. Uh, I did my PhD from uh, University of Twente, Netherlands in 13. Uh, before that, uh, I did one master's from uh, from Singapore, that was a joint program from Netherlands and then uh, before that, I had M Tech from IIT Delhi. Uh, so I was just like you, uh, once upon a time, <laughs> and uh, B Tech from uh, Rurki.
I have worked uh, almost like 10 years uh, overseas in Singapore for five years and about five years in Netherlands. And I have uh, worked in developing this kind of systems. And uh, that is the reason I wanted to, uh, I started this course here. And uh, I started to uh, want to start developing this kind of systems, although it's uh, still very far. But I think uh, with continuous effort and with the students like you, I hope that one day means uh, I will have uh, enough inertia or enough uh, people who, who understand these things and then we can uh, develop these things. So these are very miniature uh, actuators, uh, components. And uh, what one needs to understand is uh, uh, Whatever you uh, think about, whether control or AI or robotics or IoT, at the heart of it, it has to be a physical system, right? And it has to be designed well. And then only you can uh, design things on top of it. You can design a good controller. You can uh, design a very good AI system on top of it. Uh, but if you have a, a lousy mechanical system, a mechanical system which is not designed for those applications and you try to do everything with uh, with control and with the uh, ai or with the uh, uh, with the software with the uh, with the coding it may not be possible to do because your hardware doesn't support it it's as simple as that so uh, don't think that uh, we'll be only the uh, supporting guy but you will be the uh, means you will be the person who will be developing the system which will support the uh, other, uh, other other systems like control and whatever. But it has to be uh, right from the beginning. And uh, so they, these are the key learnings. And this is not uh, from me, but from my mentors, uh, from Philips when I was working in Netherlands. So. Uh, the key things are like focus on the design of high precision and fast moving mechanism. So there are two things. One is we are talking about very high precision, maybe going to the micron level, some micron level and even nanometer level. And then many times we are also talking about fast movement, high speed, because uh, in one of the video you might have seen, you can't even see how fast they are moving. And uh, the things are like that. So you have to increase the throughput, then it, uh, it has to move very fast. And moment you, moment you are talking about high speed, you need to uh, know about the stiffness and the inertia effects. And it's very important. And that's why like we talk about the stiffness as well. Stimulate creativity by examples and insights. So the reason why I'm showing different examples is just to let you think and then think differently. Guide creativity, awareness of hidden properties of accepted design. So many times like you have a design in front of you. Can you, can you understand? Can you uh, deliberate? Can you uh, in a way explain why those features are there huh? and many times when we discuss these things when we say don't create a feature which is not required right if there is a hole there should be means you you, you need that hole right if there is a some uh, hinge there why that hinge is there right and again all these uh, things most of the things are from uh, flips mechanization and product design activities and uh, work uh, done at uh, many Dutch universities. Yeah. So uh, Philips in Netherlands is very different from Philips in India. So uh, for that, you have to uh, visit Netherlands or Europe, and then you will see what Philips is. And uh, examples are ideas, concepts, and design. Of course, there is one disclaimer. As all cases are specific, the examples cannot be applied straightforward. And uh, it's applicable everywhere. So whenever you see some design and want to use for some application, you have to work on it. You have to do the calculations. You have to get the numbers right. Then only you can use it. You cannot just copy and then start using it. Uh, 
again i think uh, very close to i'll okay go back further so these are certain examples uh, so all the miniature things so this is a lithographic system as big as uh, uh, one uh, big room uh, but at the heart of it all the mecha mechanics all the mechanisms all the machines are floating they are uh, on air bearings and they can make uh, these uh, chips and uh, overlay and all those things are of the order of uh, nanometer so you can imagine mm -hmm. uh, there are micro mechanisms here there are still a uh, cliff saver this is for uh, satellite applications they are fast moving uh, pick and place mechanisms so uh, there are a lot of applications and i i think before we part today i i would like you to see this video Hello. Yes, so I think uh, today we can. Uh, so uh, in this one, uh, what uh, you might have seen and observed that we are talking about the chips and these chips going to your iPhone or any any any, any Android phones or any other uh, computer system. And uh, the kind of accuracy required you can think of. And uh, they are moving and even exchanging, right? So, and these are all mechanical systems. So how to position, how to locate, how to move things so that it's repeatable, it goes to the same place or 
if you uh, uh, can you measure and then adjust it right and that all all leads to knowing understanding like how to design the system based on the degrees of freedom required and how to get rid of any kind of uncertainties and uh, that is the key so uh, we'll cover more uh, examples but this is just to let you think and uh, how to use it in uh, so uh, like my emphasis will be more towards uh, not just developing high end uh, systems but also use those those concepts in making uh, day to day products so uh, one of the example what i also i would like to suggest that whenever you go out you also try to be observant and try to see things around so this is one of the picture i took uh, when i visited ambience mall so it's a nearby uh, when you are in iit campus and you are just uh, cross like uh, cross jnu on the other side you have uh, so there are several malls but even there you can find things which which are uh, of importance and uh, we need to understand that and these are like uh, huge display systems suspended over cables so there are six cables on top then there are three cables the middle one is suspended by three cables and then again the bottom one is suspended on three cables but the top one is suspended by six cables is it good enough why six cables only why not more or why not less i think these are the questions you should ask and then i think by the end of this course you should be able to answer all of them and you will be able to appreciate 